My journey with Hunter x Hunter has been quite interesting. I can tell you exactly how I came to know it for the first time when a friend of mine told me the premise of the manga, about a boy and his group of friends who were arguably weaker than everyone else and had to use tactical strategies in order to overcome the antagonists. How that premise made me immediately want to read the manga. How I fell in love with Gon, his friends and the journey they went through. How engaging, but also how unpredictable it was. How I read the manga up until the beginning of the Chimera Ant arc more than a decade ago and had to stop because there were no other chapters to read at the time. But then, I started to drift away from manga and anime. How I started to lose a part of myself. How I thought that I needed to grow and adhere to the society I lived in. But when my life was starting to come together again, I remember slowly wanting to come back to it, even if I didn't fully realize it myself. How I would talk about some of the best manga and anime to friends of mine who still hadn't yet jumped into that world. And I would talk about Hunter x Hunter as being my favorite shonen. How I convinced friends to jump into that world, and thanks to Madhouse, they were able to do so with the 2011 anime adaptation. And then, something happened. I watched a movie that made me realize that I had lost that part of myself. One that affected me in a way I wasn't quite expecting. Since then, I've dived deep into the world of manga and anime again, finally watching some of the most iconic anime films ever, experiencing the amazing world of slice of life anime, and re-watching some of my favorite shonen of all time. Even watching sports anime like Haikyuu that reminded me of the excitement I had when watching Slam Dunk so long ago. And then, those friends who jumped into the world of Hunter x Hunter convinced me to jump back into that world. And so, I finally started watching the 2011 anime adaptation of Hunter x Hunter from the very beginning, reliving the moments I had read in the manga so long ago. But most of all, I was finally going to go through what many people consider to be one of the greatest arcs of all time, the Chimera Ant arc. How I was a teenager when I read the manga for the first time, how I was now an adult watching the anime. How that difference in time affected me deeply due to the significance of what the Chimera Ant arc ended up meaning to me. And that's what I will be talking about here. But first, we need to talk about Shonen. Shonen, normally referring to the demographic of young teenage boys, ends up being a genre of manga and anime that normally has a young boy as a protagonist and we see him go through an adventure that requires him to get stronger in order to defeat the antagonist that he comes across. And Hunter x Hunter, even though it is considered to be an exception when it comes to the shonen genre, is in reality no exception to this. It still starts with a young boy called Gon, creating close bonds with people he comes across and going on what seems to be an uplifting journey. And the whole point is to see Gon and his friends grow through this journey, as it happens with most shonen anime. But what differs Hunter x Hunter from the rest is its rule that Tagashi has set for himself and his story, that the main characters are never stronger than who they face, and if they are, it needs to come with great consequence, which makes us ask the question, how are our protagonists going to overcome these situations? And that question is something that is asked constantly, with every arc, with every antagonist, with every obstacle they encounter. This means that no matter what is going on, you're never certain how each arc is going to end, because the structure of Hunter x Hunter isn't changed by the typical shonen formula that has been used so many times. Rather, it uses elements that we have seen many times in shonen, but then challenges those elements constantly. With Dragon Ball, we expect Goku to become stronger than the people he faces, whereas with Gon, we don't. Yes, we expect Gon to grow as a fighter, but more so how he is going to use his newfound abilities to overcome his obstacles. He knows he's not stronger than Hisoka, he knows he's not stronger than the Phantom Troop, he knows he's not stronger than Bomberman, and he for sure knows he's not stronger than Pito, much less have any chance to defeat the main villain of this arc, the King Chimera and Meruem. 
Bear in mind that when I mention he's not stronger, I mean the gap is so big that Gon really shouldn't be fighting any of them in the first place, and many times, he doesn't. So to expect that he will come out victorious through strength is immediately an impossibility. What we instead see is Gon use his mind to figure out ways to succeed in the fights he comes across. And not just Gon, but every other character in the show. It's this creativity that Takashi uses in his stories that feels so fulfilling. And the way he does this is by connecting deeply the characters' personality to that outcome. This is what Hunter x Hunter is able to do so incredibly well. It creates an impossibility for our characters, and through their personalities and development, we eventually reach an outcome that many times as our characters come out on top. And by doing so, Hunter x Hunter many times has to defy conventional way of storytelling. What do I mean by this? Well, since there is always an extreme obstacle that has to be faced, there is information that is hidden from us until the last possible second. Then, the information is presented to us as a solution to overcome that obstacle. This can many times be perceived as plot convenience, as in something out of the blue shows up in order to solve a problem. However, when Tagashi does it, it doesn't feel like a plot convenience, rather, it always feels earned. And that is because every solution that Tagashi presents us with always comes with major consequences. For instance, Kurapika's character, who has just learned the ability to control Nen, can in no way, shape or form be stronger than the people who he wishes revenge on, and that is the Phantom Troop. The Phantom Troop is composed of 13 members, all of which being massively experienced in their Nen abilities and fighting skills. But the story shows Kurapika being able to defeat one of the Phantom Troop members quite easily. And we wonder why this can happen, only for us to realize later on that Kurapika has made a vow to gain more power through restrictions that he had to force upon himself. That only certain abilities can be used when facing the Phantom Troop and so grants him immense power. But if those abilities are used against everyone who isn't the Phantom Troop, then this will lead to his immediate death. Solution through major consequence. This is what Hunter x Hunter does time and time again, and by doing so makes each character way more interesting. Because by presenting us this solution and its consequences, it also makes us understand what each character is willing to do. And thus, Tagashi constantly develops each character on a deep and meaningful level. The most notorious being Gon's arc in the Chimera Ant Saga. How he becomes close to a really strong hunter, someone close to his father, someone who he feels he can impress with his growth, someone who has trusted not only Gon, but also his good friend Killua, watching them beat each Chimera ant easily, making us think that Gon, Killua and Kite will eventually overcome each ant until they reach the King Chimera ant who is about to be born. Only for a sudden shift to the story to happen with the entrance of Pito, a Chimera ant sworn to protect the future king and born with the ability to use Nen, making her way more frightening than the other Chimera ants who came before her. This is immediately felt with her N, how it reaches far and wide and instills great fear in our characters, with her jumping straight into action and severing one of Kite's arm, how it forces Killua to run away with Gon, and how she then defeats Kite with ease. This marks a huge shift in the Chimera ant arc and makes it extremely personal. Gon is now tied to this event, feeling immense regret, feeling like he was the main reason for what had happened, how he wasn't ready to go with Kite and help him in what he needed, how he felt he was a burden and could have cost Kite's life. And after seeing the state Kite is in, he becomes even more invested in his quest to defeat Pito and restore Kite back to the way he was. The regrets that Gon feels starts to grow, something that he has hidden deep inside and won't let it come out until he faces Pito. But when the time finally comes, the moment we've all been waiting for, how we had to go through 31 episodes to get to this confrontation, Gon sees Pito utterly defenseless, saving the life of a young woman. And it's this unexpected situation that I think makes this moment absolutely incredible to witness. Because despite everything, despite all of the recent training Gon and Killua have gone through, despite all of the inner rage that Gon is feeling, 
Pito is still way stronger than they are. But since she has to save Komugi's life, she has no choice but to plead to Gon to wait. Especially since we've seen Komugi have a strong effect on the King Chimera and Meruem, the main antagonist of this whole arc, who has slowly become more human, become more understanding, become more thoughtful, which makes us want to see the relationship between Meruem and Komugi develop even more only to be thwarted when our protagonists, along with some of the most powerful hunters, engage in their plan and mistakenly place Komugi in critical condition, leaving Meruem with no choice but to request Pito to save her life. And thus, we too want Pito to do the same. We want Gon to wait. But Gon's rage is too overwhelming. The human traits that we've come to know Gon for so long are slowly disappearing because of everything he's feeling. He can't even understand how someone like Pito, who turned Kite into the soulless being he is today, could have any affection for saving anyone's life. All he cares is to seek the revenge he so desperately wants. If not for Killua, who reminded Gon that they need Pito to save Kite's life, Gon would not have agreed to wait. Our protagonist has slowly turned into something that resembles less and less what it means to be human. And of course, this contrasts beautifully with Meruem's development from someone who was born ruthless, born to wreak havoc, born to kill anyone who got in his way, to someone who slowly starts to become more and more human. All thanks to the person that is lying on the floor, close to losing her life. And the only person who can save her is the person who has destroyed Gon's mentor and friend. This is why this whole arc is so beloved. This is what defines Hunter x Hunter as one of the best shown in of all time. The way Tagashi plays with our expectations and challenges them in the best way possible. But we must still ask the question, how will Gon defeat Pito? This question then leads us to one of the climatic moments of this arc. After Kamugi's life is saved, Gon takes Pito to save Kite. But when they get there, Pito tells Gon that in reality the person they see in front of them is not Kite. It is simply a puppet she made after killing him to play around with and to train other Chimera ants. Kite has been dead since the incident. Gon, realizing this, through his feelings of denial and anger, the only thing he wants to do is to kill Pito. And suddenly, we see him transform into an adult bearing overwhelming power. Again, this could be seen as a solution that Tagashi uses to simply defeat the antagonist that lays before Gon. But since we've seen Gon go through so much, and because we've seen the likes of Kurapika gain immense power by making a vow to himself, we know that in this moment, Gon has done the same to himself. He has vowed to gain that power to defeat Pito. And by doing so, not only does he become a monster completely void of any human traits that used to define Gon, the choice he made will also come with major consequence. To gain that much power in such a short time can only lead to one outcome. After defeating Pito, he is at the brink of death. He has suffered so much that it would take a miracle to save Gon. So as you can see, Gon was able to gain the power to defeat Pito, but not without massive consequences. It's not just there to resolve the problem of defeating someone way more powerful than Gon, it's there to showcase the feeling of grief and regret he went through. Knowing that Kite died, feeling like he was the main reason for that to happen, feeling utterly hopeless and feeling like life wasn't worth living anymore. And thus, we see him transform, not in a glorified manner, but one that was extremely difficult to witness. Showcased beautifully in a 2011 anime with a mix of modern and traditional styles of animation. That's why Hunter x Hunter, but especially the Chimera Ant arc, is such a masterpiece. All thanks to Tagashi and his masterful ability to create characters that have a profound impact on the outcome of the story, but especially on ourselves. Even with the sudden introduction of Alaka, Killua's sister, being the only person who can save Gon's life, what ends up mattering most isn't saving our protagonist's life, but rather the bond that Killua has with Alaka. Alaka is someone who has two beings living inside her, Alaka and Naniki. While Alaka is a normal person, Naniki is someone who can grant anyone any wish of any kind as long as the requests that Naniki makes are fulfilled. But if those requests aren't fulfilled, then Naniki will kill the person and their loved ones immediately. And the bigger the wish, the harder those requests will be. Reason why Alaka has been locked up almost all her life in order to never place Killua's family in peril. 
But Killua's connection with Alaka is different from everybody else, because both Alaka and Nanaki deeply love Killua. And by the end of this arc, after Gon's life being saved, we see Killua try to force Nanaki to never show up again, deeply hurting both Nanaki and Alaka, making Killua realize that if he wants to be with his sister, he needs to accept both Alaka and Nanaki as one. And thus, we see Nanaki pop up, still hurt that Killua would ever request something like that, and both bond in a way that was ultimately needed. Not only is this a solution through major consequence, it is also the acceptance of it all. You can't just have the good without the bad. To have a deep connection with someone, you need to accept both. And that's what's at the heart of this mini arc. That's what Hunter x Hunter continuously does at the end of each arc. It goes back to what it always was at its core, and that is, it would never exist if not for the shonen that existed beforehand. How even when Hunter x Hunter challenges those elements, we have seen them in some form or another in Dragon Ball. How the use of tactical strategies to defeat each antagonist was found in the early days of Dragon Ball, especially during the tournament arcs. How the use of protagonists who are considerably weaker than everyone else could be found in the Frieza saga with Gohan and Krillin, both feeling like they jumped into a world controlled and fought between people who are way more significant and stronger than they are, which is the very same feeling we get with Gon and Killua in the many arcs they go through, and it wouldn't surprise me that even the names of Gon and Killua are a reference to Goku and Krillin, which would make sense considering their friendship. How Gon's ultimate ability, Jan Janken, is a reference to Goku's Janken technique found in the early days of Dragon Ball. How the sudden shift of the story in the Chimera Ant arc with Kite's death has been done in a simpler form in Dragon Ball with the sudden death of Krillin. And I'm not talking about Krillin's death against Frieza in Dragon Ball Z, I'm talking about in the original Dragon Ball right after the second World Tournament arc which is the moment that forever changed Dragon Ball as a whole. How the main villain of the Chimera Ant arc, one of the most complex and compelling villains ever, not only is his likeness a reference of both Cell and Frieza, but his path towards being more human can be found in a simpler form with many antagonists in Dragon Ball, especially with Piccolo. How Gohan is key for Piccolo to achieve the humanity he never had, and Komugi does the same for Meruem, only in a much more emotional and personal way. There is no denying that there are so many aspects of Dragon Ball found in Hunter x Hunter. And even though Dragon Ball never really used these intriguing elements to their fullest potential, Hunter x Hunter uses these elements and develops them as much as possible without losing sight of where it all came from. Because regardless of everything that each character goes through, regardless of the suffering that they had to withstand, the dark route they had to walk on, it always comes back to the light-hearted, innocent and hopeful aspect that makes Shonen truly remarkable. This is shown no better than with Gon, which can be just Tagashi wanting to express something really personal through Gon. The dark path he went through in his life due to his extreme and strenuous work when creating Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter. Having to take long hiatus breaks with the latter manga due to his mental and physical health, and showing at times the scary and dark side in his work, he always comes back to what made him want to become a mangaka in the first place. And that, I feel, is his absolute love for Shonen and its values, which resembles Gon's journey through the Chimera Ant arc and how he was able to survive it all, against all odds, and become who he truly is. Because at the end of the day, that is what matters most. To never forget where we started. To never forget what made us smile and want to live in the first place. To pursue what we truly wanted. To go through the path we chose. And even if the path was a lot harder than we initially thought, we mustn't let it get to us. How I let it get to me. How I'd forgotten a part of me that was so necessary to become the person who I am today. And that's why I absolutely love anime and film in general. It has the power to make us feel things we weren't expecting, to make us realize things about ourselves we had buried deep inside, and in my case, of the innocence and hopefulness that made me who I am, of the person that fell in love with anime so long ago because of this, that no matter the path we take, there was always a beginning. I watched all of Dragon Ball recently and mentioned in my video that with time, Dragon Ball forgot about what made it so special, but Hunter x Hunter never did. The story sets out with Gon wanting to f